Ready, guys? Yeah. Right, let's go through. Para langit tayo. Dakilang Diyos, kapalayin po ninyo, ang pagtitipong ito at pangasiwaan ng bala na Espiritu sa pangalan ko ng aming Panginoong Isus. Amen. At makakot na itong lahat. This is indeed a great pleasure to come and speak and give an address on this subject. I will try and keep my words short, but if I can at the outset say that God, in the beginning of the creation, set aside marriage for a purpose. In the beginning, when God made Adam and then his wife, the Lord Jesus stated clearly that God set marriage apart and is an ordinance for all men from the beginning of the world. Now this was done in the Garden of Eden before sin entered the world. God had a purpose and in the New Testament we learn that the secret of God in respect to marriage, the man and his wife, was in secret because in the Ephesian letter we are told that marriage portrays the relationship between Christ, the eternal Son of God, and his church, who are the elect, called redeemed from every kindred, tongue and nation. They become one in the marriage. God set marriage apart to portray this picture before sin entered the world. Now, sadly, when sin entered the world, something happened between a man and a woman. And we need to bear in mind this, because in the marriage, don't think it's going to be easy. Because of God, what happened in the beginning, God said, you know the story, Eve took a the in the fruit, and Adam heard the voice of his wife, and obeyed the voice, and entered into sin with his wife. Instead of Adam praying for his wife, saying, Eve, what have you done? Instead of Adam taking her to the throne of God and saying, look, oh, what has happened? Adam, do it. The result was this. God stepped in with the remedy. The seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head. And then God says to the serpent of the woman that in childbearing she will endure pain. Greatly increase the pain. But her desire should be towards ruining her husband. A curse. The man who 
was told he would work by the sweat of his brow until he returns to the dust, but he should rule over his wife. But the Bible doesn't say how this ruling should take place. This really tells us that man has got it wrong. And if we don't learn how to rule our wives in life, we can have a real language. The Bible's clear. When Jesus came into the world, we are taught that Christ is the example for the man. He should love his wife as Christ loved the church. He should give his life for his wife. He is the head of the wife. As Christ is the head of the church. As God the Father is the head of Christ, so there is order in the marriage, and the family, and society. Marriage has then has been set apart by God for every culture, in every generation. Now sadly, in the West, marriages break down because they've lost sight of the high calling of God. When we enter into marriage, we are invited by God to live out the relationship between Christ and the church. The man taking the lead in family prayer, family worship, to training up the children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So man is commanded, husbands, love your wives. And the wives, we're told, wives, honor your husbands. Be subject to them. Don't be unruly. We know when there's problems. You think you know best and you're trying to wear the trousers. It's the curse. The gospel shows us how to behave one towards another. And you'll realize this if we apply scriptural principles to deal with problems. Then we, the scripture will be fulfilled. This is just an example. You may not quite understand what I'm saying at the moment, but it's saying in that day, the wolf shall lay down with the lamb. Now in a marriage, there are problems. We get hurt, the wives are angry, the men's angry, they fight, they contend. But in the day of Christ, when the gospel rules, if we obey the principles, the two men are going to live together in peace through the grace which is given them. In Jesus Christ. So we have a plan. We start off in love. God's gift. God loves us. And the relationship between a man and woman is love. We feel these things. But to keep these things, to guard these things, let us remember the word of God and obey it. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, reverence your husband. And bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this way, God will bless you and we will live to celebrate the praises of His Majesty, Christ and His Church. God is all in all. God bless you. Amen.